Welcome to the first ever episode of Seton Hall Prep Network's Pirates Corner. My name's Connor McGann, alongside my co-host, Stephen O'Neill. September was an active month for the Pirates, Steve. Oh, it really has been active in West Orange. Truly a time to be alive. And we're going to cover everything here at SHPN. Connor. Let's start with the Seton Hall Prep Football Pirates. Currently 4-1, ranked 5th in the state right now. Had some pretty big wins in the first half of the season, Steve. Oh, definitely, Connor. I'd say most notably that Week Zero win against Al Barton. What a way to start the year for the Pirates. Andrew, our football team plays in a super football conference where there are no easy weeks. In the second half of the season, this football team plays not only some of the state best, but the country's best. As the team stay mentally locked in and prepared for the second half of the season. Yeah, well, we're playing some of the best teams out there every week. Um, I gotta give all the credit to the coaching staff. Coach Fitz, Coach Simpson, Coach Flotto, all the other coaches, they're working around the clock weekends too to get us ready. Uh, and then during the week, it's just on us to work hard and put that game plan into action, be ready to play. That was to start the season, Steve. Let's talk about that last game. 17 nothing win over Red Bank Catholic. The Pirates' first shot of the season, defense was dominant through all phases of the game. You gotta love a quick trip down the shore. How would you evaluate the team's overall performance so far? I feel like the team's overall performance has been decent. We still have this room, there's more room to work. A lot of our games that we won, we finished and the other team didn't, so that's what was a big factor in us winning our games. But other things that we need to work on as far as getting off to a good start is because these past four games that we've had, we've started off a little shaky. So we need to work on having a great start and a great finish. But overall, I see our performance is pretty decent. Turning our attention over to soccer, the defending state champions have started the season strong. Alex, pretty solid start to the first half of the season. Thank you. You know, what are you guys uh, doing to mentally prepare and, you know, to get yourselves ready physically, you know, for the second and gritty part of the season? I really just got to go in with the same mindset. Right now, we only have one loss, but it's about like seven, eight wins. So basically just keep doing what we're doing. Have the same mindset for each practice and then keep it like it's every other day. Joaquin, how do you feel about the culture that you've been building this year and trying to bring the underclassmen up? Um, yeah, it's just uh, having fun off and on in the field. Um, just leading by example as well in the locker room as on the field. Just making sure that we're teammates and friends and making sure that when I move on that they're also leaving the legacy that I try to leave. Yeah, they certainly have gone off to a strong start for the year. Big road wins against Livingston and West Orange. And how about that comeback win against Columbia? Which we'll get to later in the show. Off to the races, cross country and crew have gotten to a really strong start for the year. Cross Country got up to a hot start with 4-0 in their conference fight, and Crew is highlighted by Charlie Lattimore's first place finish in the JV single race. What's up guys, I'm a Cross Country star, TJ Sparno. Quick question for him, what are your goals coming up for the rest of the season? Um, so my goals for the rest of the season are for our team to hopefully win the conference championships. Um, last year we lost a lot, this past come year we lost a lot of seniors, and you know we have a lot of younger guys stepping up and filling in those spots, filling the roles, and you know, we're getting better every day. That's all we could ask for. That's the goal going in every meet. What's up, guys? I'm here at Cross Country Star Russ Webb. Quick question for him. How's the season gone up to this point? Uh, the season's actually been killer this year. So um, we did lose a lot of seniors last year, but we have a lot of freshmen who are stepping up, uh, underclassmen taking leadership roles, and uh, yeah, just open positions for guys to be scrappy and fight for those positions. And it's it's led to a lot of wins this year. So it's awesome. Yeah. What the rest of the way? Thank you. I'm here with crew senior Devin Campagna. I want to ask you how you're going to prepare for this big month of October coming out. You know, every day I practice trying to grind and get faster. We have a big race the 22nd that's in Boston. We're sending our varsity double with our other captain and one of our other seniors. We're also sending a four filled with juniors. First race is trying to get a few medals, you know, just trying to get faster every day I practice. And now I'm here with Chris Senior and Christian Timberlake. I want to ask you how, being a senior, how you're going to be able to bring the underclassmen up and really get them ready for the season. Yeah, so we're just trying to incorporate the freshmen and sophomores into more competitive boats, making sure they all have proper technique, and hoping to get some medals out of these next few races. Let's get down to the details for the month of September. Let's kick it over to Andrew Merklinger for just that. Thanks, guys. First, starting with football, we have Liam Lombergen, who obviously leads the team in passing yards with 687 passing yards, 10 total touchdowns on the year. On top of that, we have Luigi Pantano leading the team in rushing yards. We have Julius McCarty leading the team in receptions, receiving yards, and receiving touchdowns. And on the defensive side, we have Kelvin Williams leading the team in tackles with 52 tackles. 
Onto the pitch, we have Eddie Krupski leading the team with goals, having nine in the month of September. On top of his nine goals, he had two in a comeback effort in a total of 30 seconds against Colombia. Into the defensive half, we have the goalie Aiden Donovan with five shutouts in his eight total games played. The Pirates cross country team improved to 4 0 in conference play, with four runners finishing the top 10, three of those runners being the top five against Milburn and Livingston. Then, on to crew. We have Ben Vizas and Griffin King who won the junior double event and Charlie Latimer winning first place in the JV single race. Guys, back to you. Thanks Andrew. And now Steve, it's everyone's favorite time of the month. Top 10 plays. Starting off at number 10, senior captain Joaquin Nahanke with the goal against Cedar Grove. Wow, six is really firing on all cylinders. No surprise here from Joaquin. Senior captain's been doing this all season. Number nine, Mason Max, opening touchdown against Sol Barton. First shot of the season, first score for the Pirates. What a way to start off the season. At number eight, we have Jordan McAllister with the big hit. Boom! Against Irvington. Ball on the ground, recovered by Darren Byrne, setting the Pirates up in good field position. At number seven, Aiden Donovan with a big time save on a penalty shot versus Columbia. And we'll have more from that game later. At number six, we have Danny Easter's touchdown against Irvington. Look at this head tap in the end zone. You just can't stop that, Steve. At number five, it's cross country start being 4-0 in conference play. A young team like that getting off to a hot start, that's quite impressive. Mm -hmm. At number four, we have Crew's first place finish in the JV single race. What an accomplishment for Charlie Lattimore. At number three, it's Joaquin again with his goal against Livingston. Top right corner, Steve, not a goal in the world can save that shot. That's just routine. At number two, we got short time on the clock. Pirates march down the field, and here's a pass to Julius Vacari. Touchdown to win the game. Gotta love it. And it's the number one play of the month. Down 2-0 to Columbia with a minute and 36 on the clock. Eddie Krupski puts in two goals to send this game to overtime. And Karan in overtime with a shuffle in front. Fires it into the back of the net. Seton Hall prep with the improbable comeback. That's just what it's all about. Karan Shohan! Before we wrap it up, let's send it down to Harry for some upcoming events. Harry. Thanks, boys. How about that comeback? Starting out with football. Squad looks to take on number one Don Bosco on the road October 14th. Following that, last home game of the season versus St. Joe's Regional on October 22nd. Moving on to soccer, the boys look to take on impressive out-of-state matchup with St. Anthony's on October 9th. Following that, October 11th versus East Side back in Jersey. Finally, October 24th versus Newark Academy at home. Moving on to cross country, October 13th, we have the SEC Championship meet. And then the following week, October 21st, the Essex County Championship. Moving over to the water, crew looks to battle at the head of the Passaic on October 9th. And then on October 23rd, we have the national competition of the head of the Charles. That's it for the upcoming month. Got a lot of fun events coming. Uh, pack the stands. Back over to you guys. That's episode one of Pirates Corner. Thank you for joining us. We'll see everyone next time.